had it not been for the common language of music, I doubt these two would have ever been in the same room together. And here was something that, uh, you know, they, they could have been a different nationality even, not even speaking the same language, and it, would have, and it could have worked. It's been an amazingly symbiotic relationship because usually it'd be like, you know, great, this rich white chick is going to give Boogaloo, chair, you know, help Boogaloo out wrong. I mean, because what Boogaloo has now given Eden is you can't measure. I mean, she plays the piano like a dream. I don't even know that I would be a performer now if it weren't for Boogaloo. Just the fact that he taught me how to play in a similar way that he does has changed my life. It's changed my career. Oh, she makes me happy every time I say hello. I love her immensely. <laughs> and she, she's something else. I, I can't get rid of her. <laughs> people are kind of surprised because we don't look like we have very much in common and yet we do have plenty in common and it's all on account of him teaching me. In 1984, two people who on the surface couldn't be less alike made a musical connection, a connection that would lead to a lifelong partnership. In spite of their obvious differences, Eden Brent and A.B. Boogaloo Ames do have at least two things in common. They both live in the Mississippi Delta town of Greenville. And most importantly, they share a passion for the piano. I met Eden. She was still going to school. Eden come down to the club, heard me play, and she talked to me and discussed me being the teacher. I said, I would. That's, that's the first vivid memory that I have, although the, I know that I had seen Boogaloo at parties and things earlier than that. Mm -hmm. He played my sister's wedding reception. But Jessica Brent's wedding was not the first time Eden saw Boogaloo. He was a fixture at private Delta parties. Heck, I know they met over here a million times. I mean, when they, Eden was little. I mean, I'm sure she could probably tell you, but I mean, I know that like every time she was over here, Boogaloo would play. And Jessica and I would have him there, and you know, I guess he sort of seeped into her consciousness. I don't know how many young people have sat down and played next to Boogaloo or have a grabbed a microphone and sung when he was playing, but I bet it's a whole bunch. I bet it's a lot over the course of, of his lifetime. And I don't know what it was that, that caused the spark to happen where it was more than just two people working together, but him willing to invest the time and to be as generous as he obviously has been in terms of passing along some of the talent and some of the hard work that he's had over the years. He's willing to pass it along to, to him. Maybe no one ever asked before, I don't know. Boogaloo just shows me how to do it. The other lessons that I've had, I was working with mu a music score, and so the, the teacher might play it for me one or two times or show me a part that I'm making a mistake on or something, but Boogaloo just shows me the lick until I get it right. <laughs> it's a weird combination, if you, if you would believe. I mean, it, but it's a, it's a good combination because as the baton is passed, I think Eden is very fortunate to play with Boogaloo, yet Boogaloo is very fortunate to play with Eden. And interestingly enough, there aren't many young blacks who are picking up these traditional styles. I got a love that'll make you a square. Never want to let me wander out of your sight. 
washing, shopping, sweeping, mopping. You'll do all right. <laughs> I got a loving that'll make you a square. He's much older than I am. Uh, he's been a part of the black community, and I'm a part of the white community. He's a man, and I'm a woman. I mean, two people that you would just look at on the street and say they have nothing in common, and it's nurtured this wonderful friendship that will last a lifetime.